Okay, good day again. Uh, right, I'm give you a little update on how things are going. Uh, I have managed to all well, these the the bonnets cleaned up and buffed and put on. I think I already showed you that. Um, this is something I've been very keen to see happen, and uh, let's see how protractor strip painted with our new piece of chrome, plastic chrome fitted and uh, yeah I've been so, so keen to see what that's actually going to look like and yeah I like it now I'm really keen to see the whole car done and uh, mind you that's going to be waiting a little while I'll wait till I can afford paint but yeah that's the new one or the new old guard painted and uh, that's the old one, so I guess I will, I will put the gear badge back on, I'll make a cardboard template to, so I know exactly where it goes, but yeah, I really didn't like that old grey bumper strip, it just really dates it, and man he did this with 90s cars and then they Came to the conclusion it looks shit and stopped doing it. But yeah, it just looks so much better with it painted. Yeah, but yeah the uh, so I've got the other guard cleaned up. I haven't buffed it yet, as obviously. And, uh, and this. Uh, this guard's actually not easy to get off because of this um, power antenna and uh, yeah because you can unscrew it from here and then you still can't get it off because it's bolted under here and then you've got this plastic panel which has these tabs here you've got to fold these tabs back which is not easy either to get it off and uh, I'm quite surprised that it's not all rusted out in there. It was starting to get a little bit of surface rust and I've sprayed some converter stuff in there and put some primer on it and that'll be plenty good enough. This primer doesn't need a top coat, it seals. It's a, I've spoken about this many times, this red oxide. It's, it's great for a cheap product. It's probably better than a lot of the expensive products actually. And, uh, yeah, I've still got. I was going to put the guard on, and then I was looking at the inside, and I still need to. Yeah, you probably can't see because the sun, but yeah, there's spots of surface rust under there, and need to clean them up as well. So get to that. Same on the other side. And uh, I just wanted to show you these guards have probably never been off in the life of this car. So yeah, thirty years or something, but. I just wanted to show you what you can expect to find under your panels if they've never been off. In the mud. Just full. Full of wet mud. And this is a really stupid idea too. You know, having a fibre mat in there that gets wet, stays wet. You know? Why would you have something in there that absorbs water? And I'm not even sure if I'm going to put them back in there now, or, or I don't know, probably will, but only because I haven't really got time to do anything else, but I'd really like to place those mats with something that doesn't absorb water. But, uh, anyway, yeah, that's why I've just taken it back out of the shed, I've now got to hose that out. I might do something on the inside here yet. Uh, so it doesn't hold the mud, you know, so it doesn't just stay in there, you know, so that the dirt can actually wash itself out. But, uh, yeah, as I said, I'm surprised that's not all rusted out, yeah, because of that, the amount of wet mud in there. It's also full of redback spiders, and yeah, so just yeah, keep that in mind if you're putting your hands in behind it. You don't know what you might find in there. <coughs> Yeah. 
The other thing I did do, um, this power aerial hasn't worked the whole time I've had a car, and not that that bothers me, I don't listen to the radio anyway, but I figured if I'm going to take it out, I might as well get it working, and uh, yeah, it wasn't that difficult. Just, yeah, pulled it out, like when I say pull it out, pull the, the actual aerial out from the casing, stretch it out, lubricate it, push it back in a few times, up and down, up and down, until it moves freely. And sort of wasn't really doing it until I took, okay, it's on the inside. Right, on the inside, anyway, there's a car where it's just got one, there's a nut on it, actually. And, uh, yeah, you take that off and uh, it'll have, a, like, a coil. It's a, um, uh, it's a line with teeth on it, anyway, that runs on the gears, and that'll just sort of spring out, but yeah, don't let it alarm you. Do you just coil it back up and put it in? It's only the excess. Uh, yeah, like when it winds down, the excess coils itself back up. So you just coil it up, put it back in after you've greased it all. And uh, but yeah, got that all working again. How these work too is uh, because there's an earth wire runs on up to here, but that that's for a radio signal. It doesn't affect the motor. The, mo the motor um, you know when it, it, it goes up and then to bring it back down it, it just reverses the polarity of the wires so yeah that's how you test it. You put one on yeah, one on the positive, one on the negative and you know like the red on the positive and the green on the negative takes it up then you swap them over, put the green on the positive and the red on the negative to bring it back down. So that's how the motor works. It just reverses the polarity. But, uh, yeah, as I said, a little bit of mucking around, a bit of time, and, uh, yeah, it wasn't that difficult to get it all working again. So. All right. I don't think there's much else I can show you. Um, yeah, I said, I'm still having trouble with this buffing compound and uh, it just doesn't want to come off. Yeah, and, yeah, I think before I do the next lot of painting, I'm going to buy some different compound. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the other thing I've got to do now too. So I've got a vacuum hose off at the back of this engine and I can't even figure out where it goes to. I can't see, I can't feel it. And I've got a, so I've got a vacuum leak and it's affecting the idle. It's stalling occasionally and yeah, doing some funny things. <coughs> and I've also got a coolant leak. The coolant. It's probably not wide enough to see. But the coolant has been running around from the back around the rocker cover. And I'm guessing there's a uh, a steel heater pot or something that's going rusty or a loose hose or something. So but anyway, I'm about to... Oh, once I get it back in the shed after I've hosed it because I know it's stuck out here and I can't work on it overnight. But yeah, I'm going to take the top of this manifold off. As to what, how much I disconnect from it, I don't know. I'll look at that first. And, uh, yeah. If I don't have to disconnect everything, I won't. I'll just pull it to the side. And I'm hoping that I can reuse the gasket or make another one myself out of gasket paper or something because they want $60 for the gasket that goes across here. Yeah, one gasket. It's a bit bloody rude. I think anyway, but uh, yeah, I think I've got, yeah, I think the whole, the whole entire manifold, the valley cover needs to come off too, because it does, uh, I got a little bit of coolant going into the cylinder, it's you know, blowing out the exhaust pipe, 
but it's not a lot. I don't use a lot of coolant. Doesn't overheat, doesn't cause me any problems. So right at the moment, being short of cash and stuff, I'm not in any hurry to do that. So as I said, yeah, it really should happen. You know, whilst I pull, take this part of the manifold off, I should take the whole valley cover off and fix it, but I'm not going to. Mostly because I can't afford the gaskets. And, and it's not that big an issue anyway. So. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to make a uh, quick video. Just to show you what you can expect to find under your guards, and um, you probably, if you didn't want to, you know, cost to remove the guards off, you got to pull the bumper off, which that in itself is not that difficult either. But uh, if you just wanted to get the mud out, you could probably just unbolt it from down the bottom. There's a bolt here and a screw here, take mud flap off, and you know, take this cover off and you should be able to pull it out enough to get in there and get all the dirt out. So if you've got one of these or an EB or something, I would suggest you do that. Try and avoid it getting major hostiles in it. Yeah. But yeah, as I said in the other... You know, the reason I made the video was to show the guard with the painted bumper strip. Which, uh, yeah, looks good. I'm also going to I'm paint those areas too. I'm going to get rid of all this black area here. I'm going to paint the mirror mount as well as the mirror this time. And this rear cover. Yeah, I'll be repainting all of this in the green. Uh, there will only be the, the only black will be just the strips around the window and across the top. Uh, hopefully, yeah, make it look a bit more modern. So. Okay, well, thanks for watching and uh, hit a like, please.